In November 1955, the Army, in conjunction with the Navy, was assigned a mission by the Department of Defense to develop an intermediate-range ballistic missile. The development of the Jupiter IRBM system was the most complicated task ever undertaken in military research. The Army Ballistic Missile Agency has now brought this system to the operational stage. Established in February 1956, ABMA was America's first and only agency created exclusively for the performance of technical service responsibilities by long-range ballistic missile systems and orbital vehicles. By February 1957, the first prototype missile had been fabricated in the laboratories of Red Storm Arsenal. Static testing was completed, and the missile was ready for the first test firing. The lead time for the development of Jupiter Missile 1 was calculated in November 1955 for a firing schedule of May 57. Before that date, two additional missiles were scheduled to be flight tested previous to missile number one. Jupiter missile number 1A was placed on an Air Force C-124 cargo plane at the Red Stone National Airfield and flown the 650 miles to the Atlantic Missile Range test site at Cape Canaveral, Florida. It then underwent a complete checkout to ensure it had not been damaged in transit. Jupiter 1A was launched on 1 March 1957. Its mission was to test the liquid propellant rocket engine, the airframe, and a partial guidance system. The firing was normal, but a malfunction occurred during flight and an explosion followed. The second Jupiter, number 1B, suffered the same fate after traveling a short distance further. Jupiter missile number 1 was fired on May 31, 1957, as had been scheduled in November 1955. Telemetered information received from the first two firings pointed out the modifications necessary to assure a successful firing. The firing was a complete success, and all missions were accomplished. At 4.04 a.m. on the 17th of July, 1958, the Jupiter missile lifted off its launching pad at Cape Canaveral with two major missions to accomplish. These were to verify safe warhead reentry, already proven on previous tests, and to accomplish another flight test of the Jupiter initial guidance system. During the first moment of daylight, the Navy cameras searched the sky for re-entry. The search was short, for within a brief 15 minutes from the time of liftoff, the three properly separated elements of the missile breathed back into the Earth's atmosphere. The top object is the aft unit, and the center is the booster. The lower one, and the last one to lose its glow, is the nose cone itself. Like the white stream from a jet plane, the trails designed the pattern of a burnt out aft and booster unit across the sky. The USS Escape, assigned the pickup job, found the task comparatively easy, as the recovery package worked perfectly with the most cone impacting right on target. Here the red balloon from the recovery equipment bobbles brightly in the sunlight, distinctly marking the location of the nose cone. The nose cone itself is floating due to the modifications to give additional buoyancy. The skin divers take off from the tossing waters to secure their recovery gear to the nose cone. Because of the extreme accuracy of this initial guided Jupiter flight, the cone was back on shipwreck only one hour and 20 minutes from liftoff time at Cape Canaveral, Florida. After bringing in the nose cone, the men go back for the recovery balloon, which was used for this third consecutive nose cone recovery for the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. Examination of the interior of the cone disclosed the equipment tested and the instrumentation were in excellent condition during this flight. This tape recorder operating in the cone during re-entry made numerous recordings. The tape, together with the ones obtained in earlier cones, provided ABMA with comparative evaluation of internal conditions during re-entry. The nose cone container, which will be used for shipping the cone back to ABMA, is being prepared by carefully trained crews. The ship travels swiftly to San Juan, Puerto Rico, where this record-breaking nose cone is placed on the plane to be flown back to ABMA at Huntsville, Alabama, for further evaluation. The success of the warhead reentry capabilities and the demonstration of guiding accuracy in this flight have convinced ABMA that Jupiter now has an emergency operational capability. 
At the same time that development was proceeding on the missile, ground support equipment was being designed with the concept of mobility being the foremost consideration. The Jupiter is capable of being airlifted anywhere in the world and launched against enemy targets in a relatively short reaction time. To enable airmen to arm, aim, and fire this weapon at an enemy target in a very short time under field conditions, a lightweight A-frame and H-frame erection system was developed. This eliminated the necessity of an unwieldy 25-ton crane to erect the missile. The only vehicles necessary to raise the giant missile are standard trucks with a winch. A demonstration of field operation of the missile was conducted by Air Force personnel at ABMA recently for the Air Force and contractors for a development engineering inspection. During this inspection, the completed Jupiter missile system was demonstrated on a theoretical alert situation. During erection, as the winch pulls the missile past the gun fitter position, the hydraulic system takes over to allow the missile to be gently lowered onto the launcher. An airman standing close by controls the rate of descent. The missile can be lowered to the horizontal position in the same manner. Once the missile is erected, the lightweight erection equipment is removed and a transportable shelter is placed around the base of the missile. This allows the missile to be kept in a constant state of readiness by providing protection both to the crew and the missile from the elements. When an alert is received, the rose petal shelter can be quickly lowered, the missile fueled and fired in a minimum time. If the missile is not launched, the rose petal shelter can be erected again and the missile defueled. The first tactical Jupiter missile was ready to be turned over to the using Air Force troops by August 28, 1958. Members of the ADMA development team were invited to witness the formal presentation to the 864th Strategic Missile Squadron at Redstone Arsenal. Major General J.B. Medeiros, commanding general of the Army Ordnance Missile Command, praised the development team for making it possible to deliver the missile a month ahead of schedule. Brigadier General J.A. Barclay, Army Ballistic Missile Agency Commander, made the formal presentation to Major General Callahan, Commander of the Mobile Air Material Area. The weapon system was now ready for deployment overseas before the end of 1958, as had been announced previously by the Secretary of Defense. 